everybody, it's Heath Robinson with Topaz, and I am back again with the one and only John Barclay, playing a little intro in the background there. We're going to be presenting Crafting Your Images with Topaz Studio. John will be presenting his favorite tools from Topaz, including the Precision Contrast, Dehaze, and new AI Clear adjustments. For those of you who don't know anything about John, i got a little slideshow to watch here, and I'll tell you a little bit about him. John is a passionate photographer and enthusiastic workshop leader. He leads tours in the United States and around the world. He's also an inspirational speaker, spe presenting his program, Dream, Believe, Create, to audiences around the country. John's work has been published in a number of books and magazines and is treasured by a number of private collectors. He's also the recipient of an excellent award from Black and White Magazine and was chosen by DeWitt Jones to participate in his HealingImages.org program. You can see his work and view his workshop schedule at BarclayPhoto.com. Excellent. Fabulous. Well, first, thanks to my friends at Topaz, especially to Heath. It's good to be back. It's been a little while. And I've been traveling around the country with my wife and with workshop groups, and we've been having a blast. So today I thought we would discuss how I'm using Topaz Studio in my workflow, introduce you to AI a little bit. Uh, it's very new to me too, but what I've been using, I like a lot. We'll hopefully uh, demystify a little bit about what's going on with AI Clear. Uh, with regard to noise reduction, and we'll cover a number of these photographs you see on my screen right now. So once again, I always feel like there's new people in the audience, so I will cover some things that are somewhat redundant, some of the basics to make sure folks understand the interface clearly. Um, and for those who are new, you know, my style of teaching is to be somewhat redundant so that we can drill home some key concepts. We're not trying to make perfect photographs. Uh, or images here in this session because we don't have the time to really do that. But my hope is to inspire you with some of the ideas that I'm using uh, these products to, or how I'm using these products to, to help enhance my photographs. So uh, let's just get started. I'm going to flip over to, to save a little bit of time. I went ahead and loaded a few images down here. So first and foremost, let's kind of get started. Everything for the most part now resides in Topaz Studio. There are still a few standalone like black and white is its own standalone program still. Uh, so there's just a few of those left, but most everything is being ported over and will continue to be ported over to uh, the Topaz Studio interface, which is great. Um, and they're all, what's great about that is they're always enhancing things, and those are happening in the background all the time, and that's one of the big major advantages to this new interface. So first, now, as with the standalones we had before, we really couldn't do any raw processing. However, now we can. So the Topaz Studio is a raw processing engine. So I have here four images that we'll spend some time with to get started, and they are all raw files. And so just by way of introduction and tour of the, the interface, on the left side, we have some presets, if you will. So if we go down and hit clarity, for instance, you'll notice on the right side that it pulls open the precision contrast panel, the HSL panel, and the basic adjustment panel, and puts those in place. And those are the three tools that comprise and make up, or I, I guess the best word is make up, this thing called clarity. Or if I want to go work on in, impression, which we'll do here in a little bit, now it's going to open up impression, and you'll see that. Um, and if you just keep the very top left, if you keep pressing this button up here, it'll bring you back to this view so that you can see the presets that'll then put these into the uh, how you want them to be. I'm going to zero everything out um, for the moment so we're not confused by that right side. So down here, a lot of people don't know or haven't been informed you do have other tools besides the adjustment layers that happen up here in the top right. You do have a crop tool should you need that. You do have a healing brush, lens correction, an overall mask. We'll show you here in a second that each layer that you choose to make an adjustment layer from has its own mask. Then you have some ability to size things, rotate and flip images. So don't, don't forget that these exist and we'll use a couple of those here in a minute. So what's the typical workflow in a raw? You can, if you're not a fan of Lightroom and not a fan of Adobe, that's fine. You're going to start here and you're going to process your images 
totally in, in Topaz Studio. There's no need to go anywhere else. And that's why I want to show these first four images using this as a standalone. And then we'll bounce over to Lightroom and you can use Lightroom as your front end if you're more comfortable with that. And then pop over to Studio to do some enhancements there. So enough talking. Let's get started. So what would I do? Well, on a raw image, I would simply go to the basic adjustment. By the way, there's some presets here. You could hit, I could have chosen basic adjustment by clicking this icon here on the top or a brightness contrast layer and so forth. Or you can hit the adjustments and then you'll see this whole list of adjustments. So here I would come in and for me, I'm gonna set a little bit more of a black point with this image. I'm always looking at my histogram to make sure I'm not blowing out highlights like I just did there. So if I've set a little bit of a white point, it's more of a black point I need here. I can make this a little bit lighter or darker. And then believe it or not, the saturation can be kind of nice. Not on this one, more on color images. That's really all I need on this image is a very simple adjustment. Then if I want to add something like some brightness and contrast, I would just open up that layer and now I can pop in some contrast as well. Being careful not to blow out those highlights though, right? Because they, they will blow out pretty quickly. But if I do that, I can just pop back up to my this panel here and bring those highlights down until I recover those. And now we've gone from here to here and added some depth, added some contrast and clarity to this. Then you do have, and this is where some confusion comes in as well, there is a clarity slider here, and it certainly works well to add some what I call local contrast. However, I think you have a better tool in precision contrast, which is essentially our, our old friend clarity if you purchase that as a standalone. And you have some presets that you can use, and it can um, hover over these and it'll show you what those are doing or you can create your own which I've done to give you a starting place that you feel comfortable with. What I like about precision contrast is it gives me control over four different levels of contrast if you will macro low medium high versus the clarity tool in an Adobe product is just one button or one slider I should say I never feel as comfortable that I have the control, much more control here to adjust the, uh, the clarity the way I want it to be. And then a real key benefit to using precision contrast is beyond that, anytime I do contrast adjustments, remember that it's gonna spread my histogram apart. It's gonna make my, potentially block up my shadows and blow out my highlights. And because they know that at Topaz, they're saying, hey, let's give them some lighting control. So this lighting control says that if I see some things blowing out up here due to the adjustments I'm making to local contrast, I can rein that in. So it hasn't here. But if I had, I can bring the, this highlight uh, slider to the left, and that's going to recover some blown out highlights. Or I can bring the shadow slider over to the right, and that's going to bring back those blocked up shadows. So... Those are the things that I would do, and you can either hit this before and after. I'm up at the top now and hit the original or not, or anytime we just click anywhere in the photograph itself, we'll see a before and after. The only other thing I wanted to show you was you can start to have, here's where Topaz starts to shine in my mind. These are basic things that any editor ought to do. But look, we can go in and play with black and white and we have control over the things that we think we should have control over. The yellow tones, the yellow on the middle of that pipe, the orange tones, I can make those, those uh, rusted pipes become even darker, which I think I would like to do. Come down, most likely the blues are gonna have an effect, add a nice effect there. And so we can do a quick and easy black and white conversion. And then we can do things like go to, let's say, maybe Radiance. By the way, let me take a half second here. Topaz, if you haven't used Studio, it's free. And anything above this line here, see this gray line between vignette and abstraction? Those are free from vignette all the way up to here. The others down here, you can purchase a la carte or as a whole adjustment package a suite if you will and get them all at one time and you do that by simply going down here to shop pro adjustments and do that there but here's one that's kind of fun is radiance 
believe it or not, radius can add a, a, a nice look. Well, let's see what it does. It does some wonky, funky things is what it does. But if you understand how it works, like the soft glow one, it brings all this wonky color in there, but this is where the opacity slider comes into to play. And I'm gonna bring my opacity down, to, I don't know, maybe about 30. And what it's done is it's given me this interesting kind of glow, radiant glow, and brought a little bit of color back in. Well, that's okay. If I wanna get rid of that color, I can grab this layer and pull it down below this one. And now I've kept that radiance adjustment, but now the black and white adjustment is, is over top of that now. These are essentially just layers like you were in Photoshop. And now I can see what that's done. So let's turn that radiance layer off. And you see it adds kind of a nice look. I, I love the look that that creates. So I've used radiance, which looks crazy. But if you understand how to dial that down with an opacity slider, it gives you another creative choice. Let's stop just for a minute. Look what we've done here. We've got a number of layers, again, just like Photoshop. If we want to see what we've done, we can click on the eyeball and go take a look at everything we've done. And we can go back to the beginning and say, look, a basic adjustment. We did some brightness and contrast. We used precision contrast. We did a radiance adjustment, and then we added black and white, all from within Topaz Studio. Let's move on. We got a ton that I'd really like to, to get to. Now, I can just be done with that and go to my next photograph. Let's do that. So let's move along a little more quickly now that we understand some basics. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna add, each time I go through this, I'll add some things. So here's my black level. Uh, let's add a white level here without blowing things out. Go to there. This is where saturation comes in. I see how that brings out the colors. Now I'm moving that over to where they're just about what I remember them being. In this case, I'll show you what clarity does. It adds a nice little bit of clarity if you, you're uncomfortable with precision contrast or haven't purchased it yet, you can still get a fair amount done right in here. I can open up some shadows, or actually in this case, I think I'd like to make those shadows a little bit darker. And I think we're looking reasonably good. So before and after, with just the basic panel that again comes for free, and we've got a pretty darn good adjustment right away. What about white balance? Well, that's where this, in your basic panel, again, basic adjustment panel, you have a white balance. Uh, sliders here below the saturation so you can make it warmer or cooler as evidenced by the yellow and the blue. Change the tint or you can click on this um, dropper and you can click somewhere that ought to be a neutral tone and it's going to set those sliders for you. Keep in mind that that's, if you don't have something neutral in your picture or your image, it's gonna be hard to do that. Uh, so find something close and then use your eyeballs after that, the, the eye test, if you will, to then further move these sliders to get it to be maybe what you would like it to be. I'm going to set that black point just a little bit more and bring this up. Okay, let's have a little bit of fun with the poppies in the field. Let's just go explore here. What else can we do? Well, now, instead of one of the tools that we used to buy as a standalone was impression. So now... All of the tools for impression exist inside of, um, of Studio now. Look at that. Just by clicking it, we have this really cool painterly effect with all of the tools with, that we used to love that we could use, like different brushes. And that's what I'm looking at here. I have different brushes, and each one of these different brushes is going to change change this effect and make it look different until you find something that you like. Down here, you have total control over the brush size, the amount of paint, um, the uh, stroke color, and on and on and on. It's like, it's really a, a box of crayons down here that's a whole lot of fun to work with. We have a smudge tool right in here if you want to, and on and on and on. And then you can affect the color, the lighting, and the texture. Those all have to do with it. I'm not going to do a whole lot more other than show you that this is what's available to you. And let's scroll back up. Let's keep in mind and again, this is my redundancy, sorry, but I think it is helpful to go over things a few times. If you don't like this as a in-your-face painterly effect, 
which I don't, I, I think it looks great. I think it looks wonderful, but I don't want my photographs to look like that. Remember this slider is going to be an opacity slider, which is going to give you some of that background original layer, which we've done and adjusted with the basic adjustment. And it's also gonna blend through. So in other words, if I brought this all the way to the left, we're only looking at the original raw file with the basic adjustment. As I pull this over, now it's 30% of the impression is being applied, 60%, all the way up to 100%. So we can feather that look to be what we want it to be. And I love the scene in Tuscany. We were just there in May and um, did a trip. It was just fabulous. And uh, can't wait to go back in 2020. It's a, Tuscany is just breathtaking. Okay, let me check my notes. Oh, so... If you want to move on, you could do things like smudge. What does smudge do? Well, it just does what you think it would do. It kind of smudges and gives these curly, almost like, oh, what is that? There's a PC-based program, like Genuine Fractals or something, no, Fractalis or something like that. It sort of has that look, if you will. And so you could add that if you wanted to. If that was an effect or a look that you liked, then once again, you could dial down that effect to some degree. Another tool that you might consider is one we've already introduced you, and that is radiance. To give it a little bit of glow, I love going down to the soft glow and then dialing that in to some degree down here and bringing in a glow. So let's look at it again. Let's go through all of these. We can turn them all off, and we can see that we started with a pretty flat raw file. We did some basic adjustments. We used Topaz Impression. Well, studio impression, I guess. Whoops, I turned it off. Uh, impression. And then we added some smudge and some radiance, and we created this little masterpiece, you might say. And if my buddy Scott Oberly is out there, and he probably is, he says, John, you haven't created a masterpiece ever. <laughs> and anyways, um, so that's that one. Let's go to the next one. Let's go here. And here we are again, pretty flat-looking um, image straight out of raw. Let's see what we can do with our basic adjustments. Should be able to brighten that up a little bit. Probably gonna need quite a black point. It is, might need to bring some of those shadows up. Set a little bit of a white point without blowing out. I see some blown out areas in my clouds up there. We'd have to be somewhat careful of those. Let's bring those highlights, whoop, go too far. Bring my highlights down. And keep bringing this exposure up a little bit. And we're getting close. But I'm okay with the sky, but down below, I'm struggling to get it to where I want it to go. Well, let's do this. Let's add another basic adjustment, or maybe we could try a brightness contrast. Let's try that. So I'm not going to worry about the top because I'm going to show you the masking tools I have. I'm more worried about the bottom. So let's see. If I look at the bottom, can I bring the brightness of the bottom up a little bit? And then if I add, oh, that's looking a whole lot better. Yeah, the sky is looking terrible. Okay, so on every layer, you have a mask. This little plus reveals a mask. And look what we have. This is fabulous, folks. So you have a brush, a spot, which is basically a radial tool. You have a graduated filter. You can actually mask based on color, or you can mask based on even luminosity if you wanted to. That's a whole lot of capability. Let's try the grad. Okay, so this is going to work just the way you think it should. Now, one big um, suggestion. In most other split grad tools, you can grab anywhere. <laughs> Not here. You've got to grab in these boxes. Otherwise, you're going to drive yourself crazy and flip this thing upside down and make it all wonky. So just make sure when you're using this tool that you're grabbing inside of the boxes here. So I'm going to make this a little bit narrower. And now notice that this adjustment, remember how a mask works, white reveals, black conceals. So I'm over here looking on the right side. Uh, oh my gosh, I'm just hearing really bad thunder and lightning. I hope this <laughs> this webinar continues and we don't lose power. But anyways, uh, you'll notice now that the black in this mask is saying, hey, don't apply this basic uh, contrast adjustment to the sky. Only apply it to the bottom. And look what else it's doing. It's, it's using the great edge aware technology that Topaz has. So anything in between this green and this red line this technology called edge aware, and I can make that 
stronger or less strong so I can play with that is helping me to make that transition between what's below the green is all getting the adjustment, what's above the red is not getting the adjustment, and then in between it's a feathered adjustment. So by using this graduated tool, I'm essentially adding another adjustment layer only to the area that I want it to be. And that's starting to look pretty darn good compared to where we started. Okay, so we've introduced how you can build a, your own effect on raw images based on using these adjustment tools. And we've used a number of those so far. We've introduced how you can use a mask on any one of these, which helps you further define where you want your adjustment to go. Um, something else. Oh, I knew I forgot something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to undo this whole thing. And the reason I'm going to undo it is let's talk just for a minute about the new uh, AI Clear. So this is brand new and I have inside information for you. Heath is not going to hurt me because it's going to happen, I think, in the next 24 hours. But again, this is what happens with, with Topaz and what makes them so great and why I love working with them. They are already behind the scenes working on AI Clear. It just came out, what, a couple of weeks ago, and their new update that's going to make it even better is going to happen. And again, if you bought it, it doesn't cost you anything, which is fabulous. So here's the deal. So there's going to be some questions about reduced noise, or there's going to be questions about the, the standalone product for noise reduction uh, that Topaz has, or now this new thing called AI Clear. First and foremost, you want to use AI Clear on your raw file before you start at all. Because once you add any um, adjustments to it, that's going to confuse the technology that AI Clear is using. The way I, AI Clear is vastly different is it's looking at the image based on artificial intelligence technology and a whole database of images that it's going out and comparing the noise it's finding, the various noise that it's finding, and finding that noise, eliminating that noise, and then resharpening the image to overcome the softening that's happening. So whereas if I use redu reduce noise, or the, the, the standalone noise reduction program, it's going to put the same type of noise reduction on every pixel in the photograph. Whereas AI Clear is not going to do that. It's going to apply its, um, uh, its what's the adjustment, I guess, is the best word I can come up with. Its adjustment is going to be based on every specific image and be image specific. So even if you did a batch of images with AI Clear, it's gonna treat every image differently, not the same as if you batch them with a noise reduction program or, or even did it with precision, I'm sorry, with the uh, reduced noise. So in order to make it work best, a couple of thoughts, you want to hit it first. So you would go and hit AI Clear. It's gonna do its work in the background to correct the image. And in this one, we should be able to see in the sky. Off times in the sky, you'll see a little bit of uh, noise going on in the background. And it'll find that. And it'll, let me see if I can make this bigger. There we go. So let's go and look at this with the before. Before, can you see that? I hope you can see that. Sometimes in the webinar, you can't. But if you look right here, I can see the noise. Now, if I turn this adjustment back on, it's done a wonderful job of reducing that noise. Then I would go ahead and work on the image with those uh, tools that we just went through, the adjustment tools to process the raw file. You want to do that because you want to reduce noise before you start enhancing it, right? So reducing the noise with this new AI clear adjustment is killer good because, again, it's, it's so different. It's doing it on a image by image basics based on artificial intelligence that's scanning a whole bunch of images and applying it. Now, little caveat, if you have really high ISO images, it may not work because it's going to struggle to differentiate that noise from what might be details in the photograph. So you might have to go to a standalone noise reduction tool again at that point uh, or try the, the tool again that's within here, which actually works very well. This um, reduced noise might work very well. One last thing, if you're in Lightroom and you're a Lightroom user and you're on this photograph, what you're going to want to do is in your develop module, normally in the detail tab, there's going to be some 
sharpening and some noise reduction going on. You're going to want to zero all that out. So if you're going to start using AI Clear from Lightroom, go ahead and do your adjustments in Lightroom. That's fine, but please turn all these down because it's going to confuse AI Clear's artificial intelligence capability to understand and differentiate between what's noise and what's not noise. Okay. Let's see, I wanna keep moving along here. So let's now go back to here. And I think we had one more. Yeah, let's go here. Okay, over in Tuscan again, tough, tough photograph to make because we're photographing right into the sun, but it's so cool. Look at these great long shadows, but it's created a pretty flat raw file. And I didn't have enough uh, zoom to get in among, and I didn't wanna cut this too far down. And I knew I could crop later. So how do we crop? Just come down here to the bottom left, hit your crop tool, and now that gives us the ability to crop to our heart's content. Go over here and we can say done. You can rotate the angle here if you needed to as well, right? That's how you do that. We hit done. Just takes a second to pop in here. And almost done, there we go. And so now we've cropped the image. So you have that. If you have some dust spots and so forth, which believe it or not, there are a couple in here, you would hit the healing brush and you can make the brush size bigger or smaller. And you can come in here. Let's move this even smaller. And there's a little piece of dust. Basically it was pollen that was floating through the air there. And there's probably a few more of them that'll come up here as we move through the image. I typically like to do that first. Okay. Come on, that should pop back to have the crop as well. All right, so now we're just gonna go back in here, do our basic adjustment, brighten this up a little bit, set a good solid black point, because that's gonna need that, set a white point, uh, start to bring some of that out. That's starting to, actually, we can set these almost all the way up because of the, the level of, there we go. Now we're looking better. And now let's bring the brightness of this image up. And then the, the magic sauce coming in here with this, slider for saturation. What you're going to notice that's different than other products that are, that are on the market is what Topaz is doing is like with the exposure, for instance, it's not only just doing exposure, but it's trying to rein in the, the highlights and the shadows. So it's doing a great job of restraining things from blocking up, blowing out. Same thing when you're using the shadow and highlight slider. Same thing when you hit the saturation slider. It's not going to act the same on every specific image because of their technology that's helping to restrain things in the background, which I'm really grateful for because it allows me to go from this to this and create this very atmospheric kind of moody uh, rendition of this wonderful scene in Tuscany. All right, let me see where I am here. Okay, let's go. We're gonna leave things to be there. So wrap up, I guess. Let's just wrap up and remind you that all of this is happening as a standalone product. I drag and drop the images into the film strip here and I'm ready to start working and do all the things that we've been doing here. If in fact you are a Lightroom user, and I am, I love Lightroom, but I love Topaz too, because I believe specifically the, the specific things that I like that I can't do anywhere else is instead of clarity, I will always go to precision contrast. Instead of dehaze in Lightroom, I will always go to dehaze in, uh, in studio. They're just better, period. There's just no questions about it in my mind from going through this. Uh, so let me get uh, to here. So here's an image that I've worked on extensively in Lightroom. You can see that I've changed the white balance. I've gone through a fair amount of work here. I've also gone in here and I've done a couple of um, graduated filters here so that I can adjust the, the, the bottom of the image. I, can all, I also did it so that I can see what's going on. Come on, switch there, yeah, the top of the image. So I'm working this a lot. But you'll also notice, let me turn that off now, that I have not touched clarity or dehaze or even vibrance. I, you know, I could hit vibrance, that's fine. I have no problem using vibrance here. But this is what I would normally do. I would then right click the image, I'll go down to edit, and my preference is always to work in Photoshop because I would love to have that layer available to then have masking in. Even though the masking is great right from within uh, the Topaz products, I still loving, I love rather having the ability to have a layer and a layer mask. 
okay come on open up someday here we go there we go so here's what I would do I would immediately go command J because I want to create a background layer if you don't studio will remind you hey you didn't create a background layer to work on I mean a duplicate layer to work on do you want to do that or not and you can choose not to it's a good idea to always work on one and then I would come up here and I would just go get studio and now I would start using the tools on an image that I did most of the work on in um, in Lightroom so what would I do here I'd come over to my adjustments now immediately go down to the things that I love precision contrast comes to mind and I have a preset that I like so I'm gonna start with that and so let's see what that did before or after look at the detail in the clouds look at the detail down here I'm gonna hold it for a while before after now let's look at the ground before after okay I don't like that let's let's add a little bit more of that micro contrast and really bring out those clouds even more before Oops, before, after. Look what it did. It blew out some areas. Remember I said, the one thing I like about this tool is I have now the lighting area here. So I can come down here and I can bring this back. And now I've brought back those blown out areas, but I've kept that great drama in the sky. This is Steptoe Butte out in the Palouse, by the way. We did two back-to-back -back workshops. I did one with my buddy Rad Drew, who does a number of webinars as well who's a great friend, great photographer, and uh, we were having a party out there together, and then I was there for another workshop I did on my own, but uh, I'll be heading back there again next year, so will Rad, so uh, we'd love to see you with us if you wanna come explore that area. Now, so there's that. And then the other one is, let's go down to, why am I mental play? There we go, D. Hayes. Probably doesn't need a lot of D. Hayes, but let me just tell you why I like dehaze so much. I've just pushed, well, okay, I push it way too much. I'm gonna push it up pretty aggressively. What you'll notice is it does a great job of removing haze without affecting the colors. What I notice in the Adobe products is when I push the haze in the Adobe, the colors get really purple and blue and wonky. They look terrible. Here, look, I mean, I'm going nuts and it's making it look wonky. But ju just for instance, look down here in the greens. Those greens are pretty darn good. Even pushed way up there. N nobody in the right mind, well, hopefully nobody in the right mind would push this uh, effect that much. But that's where I would typically do that. And look at the difference with what I could do in Lightroom and what I can do here. I mean, this sky is just crazy. I adore this and it's all because I can do it here. Now, remember, if I don't want it, it, this is really fun. You can use dehaze just on the ground if you want. What would you do? Hit the plus sign, go in and get a grad filter and say, look, I just want that to be here. I'm gonna bring these together, make them a little closer. And now remember what's below the green is what's going to be having the effect of that dehaze. What's above the green is not gonna get that and so forth, right? So. Lots of power, lots of capability. Let's uh, let's go and just cancel out of that. I'm not going to save it. Trust me, I already have one that looks like that. Let's go back to Lightroom. Let me look at my notes here. Uh, let's look at our time. Oh, we've got plenty of time. Cool. All right, so let's go here. Once again, I've done some work on the iconic Cypress stand. I need to bring out a little more of the shadows there. There we go. So I just brought out the shadows in these tr the stand of trees i'm going to again i'm doing lightroom work here even though this is a topaz session so now what can i do well i've done what i want to do here i feel pretty good about it i'm going to go now and do the same thing again i'm going to edit this in photoshop because i want to do a black and white conversion okay command j command or control j that gives me my background layer let's go back into Topaz, let's go to Topaz Studio again. Now what can we do? Well, we can do similar things that I just spoke to you about. We can do those things and I would likely do that. Whoops, I, yep, did I hit? Yeah, precision contrast, good. I would likely hit this one because ultimately I wanna do black and white. I just hit John Start and do that. Uh, I don't think it needs dehaze. Let's just take a quick look at that. Not gonna hurt anything. Actually, I like the way it darkened the blues. But now what we can do is we can go in here and we can say, let's do a black and white adjustment. 
and we can start to darken those blues, which we know are going to happen. We're going to go in. The, the grasses are usually yellow. I know you think they're green, but they're usually yellow and green. So we can brighten that, lighten that up. And I love lightening up the, the greens because then we have a nice contrast. And pretty quickly, we can have a nice looking black and white photograph right from within studio. Okay. If you want more control and black and white is your thing, at this moment, you can still go out here. I'm up at the top now, way at the top where the top menu is. I can go in here to my plugins and I can go to black and white effects. Now what's going to happen is right from within Topaz Studio, this is allowing me to go out to my standalone plugin. This is one of the few plugins that are still not integrated because there's a fair amount that has to be done in order to make this plugin work from within studio. So taking a minute here, hopefully it won't take a whole lot longer. Um, it's building the previews. I feel like we should have music being playing right now. Um, there we go. And now we're into a full fledged black and white editor where we have our global uh, choices for filters and we can see what they're going to do and add drama to the sky, etc. by hitting a red filter. We have the ability to come down here to the color filter where we can affect the strength of that particular uh, filter. So a whole lot more adjustment capability, including uh, adaptive exposure, which you could actually do within studio now, but we have individual color sensitivities here, just like, like we did uh, in studio. The key one is that we have this ability to do the color filters and make it be wherever you want on the hue spectrum and really fine tune your look and add to the strength slider. And then you have some creative effects you can use. You have some finishing touches and on and on and on. So just wanted to point out that you can bump out to the full fledged editor right from within studio if that's what you want to. Then you hit OK. Oops. <laughs> Obviously, I haven't upgraded that, so I'll just cancel that and, and we'll uh, cancel this adjustment at the point. Yes. Okay, so that's how we can take an image from Lightroom, do our finishing touches in studio, and do some black and white conversions, whether it be from within studio, just with the more uh, simplistic thick approach with the black and white adjustment layer or with the full fledged. And by the way, again, remember, if you've already purchased any of these, you don't need to purchase them again. They'll just automatically populate and they'll be there waiting for you. Okay. A couple of fun ones. Let's, uh, where am I? I want to cancel out of this. Don't save. going to go back to Lightroom and let's look at, oh, that's right. We're going to go here. So on a photograph like this, I really have done pretty much all I want to do here and this is in the in Siena the city of Siena so let's do this actually what I could have done on this one is answer the one question that some of you might have and that is can I just open it up from Lightroom right into studio absolutely you don't have to do what I do I just like the ability to have a background layer it's my habit so let's go into studio again let's introduce you to one other really cool too so we could use and we'll show you both we could use precision contrast to enhance this so let's look at that and we could even do something somewhat aggressive. Let's look here and go to details. Not bad. I mean, it does a pretty darn good job. Let's now hit the eyeball on that. All I did was turn the eyeball off by clicking on it. So now that adjustment is not showing. Now let's go here to precision detail. Why would I use one versus the other? Well, precision detail is much more aggressive. So there's what precision detail does. Let me turn that off. Come on, there we go. And they're similar, but trust me, they're different. So on this one, I would tend to use the precision detail to bring out the details. And then once again, feather that look down a little bit with my opacity slider. So precision detail, when you've got an image like this that's got detail or you want to just grab that detail and bring it out of there, that's where I would uh, use precision detail. So there's that one that I wanted to make sure we got to. Okay, just uh, two more, two more. I wanna get through these, I really do, because the next one's really funky. Brad and I were doing the workshop together and we learned about this one accidentally. So let's say we are out in the uh, Palouse and we're gonna go ahead and this, we're gonna go right to studio just to show you we can do that. And we've got this great old barn and we say, gosh, this is a great old barn but too bad it didn't have color in that barn well watch this so 
here's the, the whole workflow here. Come in here, let's set a, a white point. Let's set a black point. Let's bring open some of those shadows. Well, in this case, just for speed, we're going to add the clarity here, bring some exposure into this. Okay, let's say we got to there and we, we like that. And we, we think that's great. But doggone it, I wish that barn watched this. Let's go into the HSL panel. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, HSL panel. And now we have color, hue, saturation, lightness. Well, we know what color does. It changes the color. We know what saturation, it makes the color have. It's like pouring more bucket of paint. The lightness is the, is it a lighter or darker shade? But if we go to the hue, and this barn has some yellow in it, so let's go to the yellow slider and see what happens. Well, actually, I think it might be the orange slider I want to do. Let me just check here. Yeah, there we go. Look at this. I can start pulling the slider over and it's going to take something that was in the orange family and start to make it a different color. Anything I want to, I can make it a green barn. That's horrible. I can make it a blue barn, but man, if it just had a rusty old red look to it, wouldn't that be a lot nicer? So let's see what that looks like. Well, look at that. It's like a faded old red barn. And you say, but John, it's bleeding over into the rest of the image. And I say, but folks, Go get, whoops, I'm going to go get a brush tool. Yeah, I don't want to do that. Let me undo this. Hold on. I'm going to go get my brush tool. I'm going to make that brush tool bigger by hitting the radius down here. I'm going to make the softness less soft. I'm making it a little harder. I want edge aware on. And now I'm going to go ahead and paint with black. How do I paint with black? Either I hit the black here, see it's black or white, or I make the slider go there. And now I can go in and I can paint out the areas that might have been spilling over and receiving, you must be careful here, receiving that adjustment. So now only the barn should be being adjusted by that hue saturation adjustment where I can add some red into the barn. And then I'm gonna bring this photograph to the farmer next year and the farmer's gonna go, what the heck happened to my barn? I'm gonna tell him, you know, if you had any courtesy for us photographers, you'd be painting this barn for us because we would love that. Okay, so anyways, Let's now go the last one. Last one. Gosh, this time goes by so stinking fast. Uh oh, I think I better get rid of this before. Where are we here? Hopefully I didn't just mess that up. Here we go. This, there we go. All right. Going too fast because I want to get them all in here. Okay, so we'll get rid of that so we don't clog things up. All right, now let's go here. The last one is a poppy. So the other... Um, and the last that we'll talk about today is, and let's just get in there so we can keep talking as this is happening. We're going to go into studio again. So one of the happiest days of my life was when Topaz came out with texture effects. I mean, you talk about a happy place. I mean, it's, it's like a playground. It's just so much stinking fun. So what happened to it? Everybody goes, I can't buy it as a standalone. That's correct. You can get it if you need to. And if somebody has that question, they can answer it online or Heath can tell you. Um, but here's the deal. It's everything you needed or everything you had is now in studio. So how would you do that? You would come over here. Remember to the left. You come over here. And if you don't see this, something's happening. You, know, you just go like this. Um, and you would hit texture effects down at the bottom left here. Watch what's going to happen. When I hit texture effects, here's what it's done. Let me roll these up so you can see. This is exactly what you have in the standalone version of texture effects. So by clicking this again over here, it'll show you that. Now, what's it showing me now? It's showing me all of the presets over here on the left side. So I can scroll through these and I can see, if I see something I like, I can click on it. And now it's gonna make a preset of all of the sliders of all of these panels to be whatever this is over here. And these go on forever to give you just tons of wonderful looks over here, should that be what you want to do. Uh, but here's what I would do. I'm gonna come back over here. I'm gonna hit texture effects again. Oops, I'm gonna go over here. Yeah, there we go. Now we're back to the basic. So now if you, once you get by working on these as presets, here's where the party starts is you can come over here and you can go to this texture panel. Come on, there we go. And you can start hovering over these textures and finding other 
looks that are yours. You can import your own textures. You can import textures from other people. You, you have anything and everything that you want to do, and you should. You know, here's my textures. So I come in here and I hit this one, and then I can change the blend mode to multiply. Oh, you know what I want to do? Let, I'm going to reset this back to the beginning. You actually and, had two textures in that workflow, so th they were both. Yeah, that's what. Other. Thank you. If I come back, I'm just going to do it my way because I'm much more comfortable. So uh, here we go. That's what I wanted to do. Thanks, Heath. Uh, we're because uh, I'm really going fast because I want to get through this to show you how cool this is. So look at this great texture here, right? So I, I have the ability to pick whatever texture I want. The question's going to come up. I'm going to do this really fast. If you want to add your own, this little icon here, you have to have a texture layer open. Hit this icon, and this is where you can go in and add a category, call it whatever, uh, uh, like flypaper textures. I adore those. You would call it flypaper texture, and then you would hit import, and you would bring them in. So that's how you add your own textures. But once you have a texture, look how fast it is. You scroll over these and you can see exactly what the texture is going to look like. So if you like that one better, great. But now you have the ability to change the blend mode of that. Leave it at normal. You have the ability to change the opacity of that texture layer. You can flip that texture layer. Flip it this way. You can change the brightness of just the texture layer. It's not affecting the flower behind it. You can affect the contrast. I mean, it is a party. If you want to know more about the texture work, I've got two webinars in their archived webinar just about texture effects, and that would all apply to this right here. So <sighs> take a breath. Um, we covered a whole lot. Thankfully, they record these folks, and you can go back and watch this again if you found that there's some value in this. But hang around because Heath is coming up next, and he's going to give away some product, and then he's going to give you my contact for. Um, you know, whether it be Facebook or Instagram or my website, I would love to see you there. You can sign up for a newsletter. I would love more followers on Instagram. So that's great. And it's fun to communicate there as well and meet new friends. So Heath, take it over and tell them who's the winner and how they can get all these great products and the specials. Because I think there's still specials being offered. If you sat through this and you didn't fall asleep, you'll be rewarded with a nice discount code here coming up. Uh, guys, if you want to follow John, he's got some great stuff. We talked about his workshops. I know you just got back from the Palouse. Uh, you can visit his website. That's BarclayPhoto.com. You can also follow him on Facebook. That's Facebook.com forward slash John Barclay Photo. You can see him on Instagram at John Barclay Photo or on Twitter at JH Barclay. Uh, check out his site. He's got tons of stuff. I don't know if you've got any workshops coming up, John. Uh, yeah, most of them are full for the year. The, the one that I do have is January to the hideout, which is Horses in the Snow which is a ridiculously fun workshop. Yeah, it's cold, it's Wyoming, but it's really not that cold and it's exhilarating. If you wanna learn about that type or anything of my workshops, go to the website and there's a special events page and the, that one will be there. And there's also a workshop page. And then the best thing to do is go to barclayphoto.com, sign up for my newsletter, then you'll get a monthly notification of all the new things I'm doing. And you can sign up to get a pre-notification of when I'm gonna announce a workshop. That's why they fill so fast. I've got a to be notified list for everything. Mm -hmm. and those folks get first notification of a, of a workshop and they tend to fill up in a day. So if you're interested to come along, we'd love to have you. That's the way to do it. Sign up for the newsletter on the website. Yeah, thanks so much. I appreciate that. That's a great yeah, resource. Thank you. Um, and then again, guys, always, if you have any questions, you can always email us directly at webinars at topazlabs.com. You can sign up for upcoming webinars. I've got one coming up with Joe Reardon next week at topazlabs.com forward slash webinars. Um, that's about it. <laughs> I can't wait to have you back, John. It's always a blast. Hey, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for supporting my friends at Topaz. They are a great company. And uh, and thanks for following along. I appreciate it. Yep. We hope you have a very safe and happy 4th of July. If you're celebrating, please be careful and be safe. It gets kind of crazy out there. <laughs> Don't drink more than two Red Bulls. Yeah, that's uh, I'm, I've got the shakes, man. <laughs> I'll see All you right, next time. Yep. Bye-bye. Have a good afternoon, everybody.